Welcome everyone. Good morning. I'm Daniel Bednarik and let me introduce to you my PhD topic which are therapeutic strategies in close three days difficile infection. I'm a resident doctor in Hempa Children's Hospital and a PhD student. My supervisors are Katar Lemke and Laszlo Fedverinaj. My SMS is Anders Rantz and my statistician is Noemi Gede. Our specific goals. In the first project, we compare the effectiveness and safety of different therapies in C. diff infection in adults. And in the second project, we do the same in pediatric population. Now let me introduce to you my first project. A little bit about the background. Why is it a really hot topic and why is it a really interesting and important topic nowadays too? So this is the most common healthcare as a society there worldwide from 20 to 27 person caused by C. diff. Almost half a million cases in the US, according to the latest that were registered among adults and children. There were more than 10,000 deaths in the US and the incidence of relapses is around from 15 to 35 percent. Our aim is to find the best possible therapy. Our clinical question, which is the best therapeutic option for C. diff infection? For this, we use the PICO framework, P, adult patients with C. diff infection, I and C, any intervention given, and for outcome, the clinical resolution of the C. diff as society, diarrhea, recurrency, overall survival, morbidity, and side effects. Or hypothesis, fecal microbiota transplant, so FMT, is the superior therapy for C. diff infection. We did our systematic search with this final search key in the three big databases and uh, we've got uh, more than uh, 6,500 articles and after the selection we've got uh, 111 eligible full text for the data extraction. All of them are our CTs. Now let me introduce to you our three main endpoints. The cure rate, the recurrent rate and the prevention. In the cure rate, we examined that how many patients were cured during the treatment. In the recurrent rate, we checked that how many patients have recurrency after the end of the treatment. And in the prevention group, we checked how many patients could avoid the recurrency. In this presentation, I will show to you the cure rate globally. So we will include the recurrent and non-recurrent cases for it. And as in subgroups, the recurrent and non-recurrent cases. So now let me introduce to you our first network plot in the case of cure rate. In this network plot, you can see knots and edges. Every knot represents different kinds of therapies against C. diff infection. Next to the knots, you can see the name of the possible treatments. The bigger knots represent that, that um, treatment was included in more articles like the others. So you can see vancomycin was included in the most articles in our analysis. Every edges show comparison among different kinds of treatments and the number above it show us how many articles included this comparison. For this analysis, we included 16 interventions from 28 studies and a little bit, little bit less than 5,000 patients. Related to this network, we investigated here the cure rate of different kind of therapies against C. diff infection. As a clinician, it's really important outcome how effective our therapy is. In this leak table, in the blue bars, you can see the possible treatments. Possible treatments are arranged in descending order according to P-score from the left to the right. In the area above the blue bars, you can see the direct comparisons and below it the direct and the estimated indirect ones pulled together. Odd ratio is given in the cells. We compare one treatment from the left with one treatment from the right and it indicates how great are the chance of recovery. So for example, when we compare FMT with fidaxomycin, we see that almost six times higher the chance of recovery in FMT arm. The confidence interval is shown in brackets, and if both elements are greater than one, in that case we can say the result is mathematically significant. You, according to this leak table, and the fact FMT is mathematically significantly better like the other treatments and if we check the P-score we see that FMT's P-score is significantly larger than the other treatments one 
This analysis suggests that for us, in the case of C. diff infection globally, the best possible treatment, the FMT, is. Now let's see what's the situation in the recurrence subgroup. So now let me introduce to you first the recurrence subgroup. For this analysis, we included only those studies which uh, included patients who suffered from a recurrence C. diff infection. This is a network plot. We included 11 interventions for this analysis from 10 studies and more than 10,200 patients were included. This is a league table in the recurrence subgroup. FMT became the first in this analysis. And uh, if we compared FMT with fidexomycin, we saw that there is almost eight times higher chance of recovery in the FMT arm. So according to a league table and according to the or P score here, we can say that FMT is mathematically significantly better like the other treatments. So this analysis suggests that for us, in the case of recurrence C. diff infection, the best possible therapy, the FMT is. Now let's see what's the situation in the non-recurrence subgroup. So for this analysis, we included only those studies which included patients who suffered from a non-recurrence C. diff infection. So this is our network plot. We included 12 interventions from 17 studies and uh, more than 10,400 patients were included for the analysis. This is a league table and in this league table, fidexomycin became at the first place. However, it's only significant compared with placebo. So according to our league table and uh, according to our P-score, we can say that it's not a clearly mathematically significant result, but um, it's a clinically significant result because uh, it suggests it's that for us, in the case of non-recurrent C. diff infection, the first chosen therapy that's antibiotics therapy, and by the way, it's the same like the current guidelines set for us. And among the antibiotics, fidexomycin seems to be the best uh, chosen antibiotic against C. diff infection. So till now we've got our plots in the first project, the baseline table and the grading is ongoing and nearly finishing and soon we will start the manuscript writing. So let me introduce to you my second project with comparing the effectiveness and safety of different therapies in C. diff infection in pediatric patients. A little bit about the background again, only I would like to highlight a few things to you. So there were around 8,000 hospitalized children who had C. diff infection in the US according to the latest data, and the number of cases are growing and growing. And this is the fact why is it a really hot topic nowadays in the field of pediatrics. And let me highlight one more thing. So in the pediatric population, this illness, the C. diff is really important and common in those pediatric population who spend a lot of time in hospital due to underlying diseases. So for them, it's really important to get the best possible therapy against C. diff too. So our aim is to find the best possible therapy in children. Our clinical question, which is the best therapeutic option for C. diff infection in pediatric population? And our hypothesis is FMT is the superior therapy for C. diff infection in children too. We did our systematic search with this final search key in the three big databases. And uh, we are after the duplicate removal. During it, uh, we found around uh, 8,000 uh, articles. So we, after the duplicate removal, the title and abstract selection is ongoing. So for summary, we would like to finish uh, our first project in the summer of this year, and uh, we would like to finish our second project in this year too. So at the end, I would like to finish with the quote from Abbas St. Jordi, whatever man does, he must do first in his mind. So thank you for your kindly attention. My question is about uh, these uh, future uh, perspectives of FMT, mm -hmm. since it works really very good. Um, is there any companies who are developing it, or is there any uh, uh, types of um, mm -hmm. new developments for that for make it a lot better, or mm -hmm. protocols for that? Very good question. By the way, uh, nowadays, rather the universities do it, not um, 
companies, if I'm right. So, for example, in Hungary, the leader of it, that's the University of Debrecen, by the way, and uh, they do it uh, as a university project, so rather the universities do it right, uh, not the uh, companies. At your institution, like FMT is a widely used therapy or they are using antibiotics there? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, it's a really good question. So, I'm a pediatrician, by the way, so in the pediatrician field it's a really, really new thing. So, only in Hungary we try it and uh, only at the Debrecen University there was, uh, there were, I think, some of uh, uh, treatments about it. So in the daily routine, we use rather antibiotics nowadays. And um, I think our analysis, the, the take home message is rather that uh, later it should be used for the recurrent uh, cases, the FMT2. And uh, we will see it will be the same in the pediatric population too, but uh, in the adult population it's absolutely we see that, yeah. You've got a very complex network, so a lot of interventions have been compared. Yeah. If you had a chance to say this is the one or these are the three mm -hmm. studies that I would like to see the results because I feel an uncertainty there, mm -hmm. what would you, so I'm, I'm, I'm asking about you RCTs comparing two agents that have not been compared before, do you, mm -hmm. do you have a view on that? It's a really good question. I don't know it now, but I will check it because um, I think on the field of uh, compared FMT with uh, antibiotics, maybe there is a chance for it because uh, if I remember well, FMT was compared with uh, phylloxomycin and with vancomycin and maybe with other antibiotics it wasn't, but uh, now I'm not absolutely sure about it. You're saying that there should be comparison between FMT versus FMT plus an antibiotic? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. How confident do you feel about the data of the non-recurrent uh, uh, situation? Because I, I feel that FMT was less frequent in, in, in that comparison. So uh, do you like those data or are... It's a really good question. So, by the way, uh, in the non-recurrent cases, because the current guidelines uh, suggest that uh, in a non-recurrent uh, first case of uh, C. diff infection use antibiotics, so only a few studies we've got till now, but we've got, by the way, and uh, in those uh, studies from Denmark, for example, uh, they, they've got that result, uh, antibiotics is as, uh, effective as the FMT in the non-recurrent cases, but uh, yeah, it's only two studies, so it's not uh, so many. So later, I think it's, yeah, it's a really interesting uh, field to do RCTs.